Hi guys, it's Suzanne HB here of Crazy Just Might Work on Instagram and I'm attempting my second tutorial to do the beaded secrets bracelet. Um, the hidden secrets tutorial is done by Loves to Loom. Uh, she does a brilliant job as always but the, um, the cat bands is something that she's not fond of so I've decided to do the um, couple of tutorials that I'm doing involving the cat bands so I'll show uh, my way of doing that and you can use whichever way you prefer then. This one um, uses about 100 bands and about uh, 24 beads or so. On this one I've used clear beads and your internal band I've used white but you could use um, something pretty that would show up through clear beads you could use whatever kind of beads you like. I've just used plastic pony beads because that's what I have around the house. And I'll show you, uh, demonstrate this one on some other plastic pony beads because as I said, that's what I have around here. Um, if you've watched the other tutorial, then you'll have a pretty good idea where we're going with this. So what I'll do is, I won't do a whole bracelet, I'll just show you um, the technique of getting the bands and beads on there and um, you can go off on your merry way and make your own bracelet and show me on Instagram. Alrighty, let's get started. Alrighty, for this one I've decided to um, go with a couple of contrasting bands just so you can see it clearly. So we will be working with the original metallic blue rainbow loom bands and the new white Persian uh, bands and the beads will be just a sort of um, turquoisey blue colour and a creamy yellow colour. Alrighty, so the first thing you'll need to do is get the, the end loop done. Now the end loop is just um, all of the capped bands plus the beads going on to the one because it's just going to form the end of the, the main loop. But on this bracelet I'm going to use the same number going on to the end loop as will go on to each of the other loops. Um, so you will see what I mean. Alright, so the end I think we'll do with the um, Persian bands. So on this one, um, the one that I showed you, sorry, go back to here, the one that I showed you actually has um, one triple capped band um, on each side of the bead and that works quite well with the jelly but what I'm going to do with, because I've got kind of springier bands particularly the metallic blue is I'm going to do quad capped bands so four times around the hook I'm using a two millimeter crochet hook again rather than the rainbow loom hook uh, I just find that, that that is much easier for me so we'll start with this one going on and doing quad cap so four times around one two three four and we're only putting one band and then the bead and then the second band going on the side of that two three four sorry I have to count or I lose track and each sort of row of the bracelet gets the same colour so this end one will just have the Persian plus the yellow on the end so one, two, three, four and the bead, sorry if it's going out of focus I'll try and move it to where it's in bead and Again, we've got one, two, three, oops, three. I'm not having much luck with this. I'm doing it around my iPad, so one, two, three, four. Alright, so that's going to be on the first loop. Alrighty. Again, I'm just using white as the internal band. I'm finding that the rainbow loom black and white have got a good stretch. Um, any colour would do, so long as it's a band that's got a good stretch on it. Um, I find the jelly bands just a little bit springy to work with as internal bands, but that's 
completely up to you what you feel comfortable with. Uh, this one is just a matter of sliding it on. I find that if I put one end on to the loom, I apologise if I get these at really strange angles for you. If you've watched my hidden loophole bracelet tutorial, you know that you can lose these really easily. All right, so we've got that, so it's got a bit of tension on it. And then we just need to slide these ones over onto the end. Okay, so I've got those ones on. And this end needs to hook back onto that end there. That side on the front two pegs. So that's going to be our first one. You can fiddle with the bands when we when we finish, but that's our first one. All right. So in between, we need to do a band, single band, and hook that over the top. And then we're on to doing the next row. So that's our our first one that'll form the end. If you like, if you don't like the way this looks, you could just cut down to one band in between them, depending on how it looks when you're going, um, when you're finishing off. But if you don't like that look, you can try it with just the one band. Alrighty, so loading up again. I find that loading them all at once is easier for me. You're just focusing on one thing at one time. So one, two, three, four, and then a bead. One, two, three, four. So that's one side. So we've got a band again. One, two, three, four. Bead. And slide those down a bit. Go to room. One, two, three, and four. Alrighty. So that's all loaded. But you're just going to do one side at a time. So, again, I'm going to actually turn this around slightly so it's a more comfortable position for me. I face it away from me to get the tension on it a little bit easier. So, hopefully, it'll be clear enough to you what I'm doing anyway. On each side, you're going to pull this band off, keep some good tension on it, keep it on the opposite side, and put one band, one bead, one band onto that side and put it back on. So, a bit of tension on it. Slide one band, one bead, and then the second band. Right, and then getting this back on here however you can, get a good amount going on it. I sometimes drop it behind and just hook it over there. Depends what angle you're working at, just get that on best, as best as you can because this can be easily pushed to and fro, and back and forward. So when you're putting it back on, just find the easiest angle for you. So we've already got that second side loaded up. Pull that one off, get the tension going again, and put on, try and keep that tension there, band, the bead. And then the band. Again, this one's sort of sitting around to the front at the moment. You can drop it around to the back. Or you can just turn it whichever way is easiest. I've dropped so many of these things off. Sorry about the camera. I've dropped so many things, these off, but it's actually pretty quick to fix because all you have to do is catch that, which doesn't usually spring back too far. Catch it and re-loop anything that's actually come off in the meantime. All right. So that's your second layer. As with every one on here, this kind of band in my hidden series, you put another band on again and hook over to make the completed loop. Alrighty. Now because these are 
been looped a bit tighter, we've did the quad bands, it's going to get a slightly more rounded effect than the straight look doing the triple cap bands because the triple cap was just about it was closer to the width of the the beads so you can really play around with this hidden series it's it's a matter of just trying out what um, number of bands how many times you cap it um, I've kind of pushed it to its limit with the hidden loophole and the hidden links but anywhere in between you know you might find that you want to do double capped inside and you know two quintuple capped outside bands and and you like that look about it um it really is entirely up to you it's one that you can just play with and make your own alrighty so I'll do just a couple more of these rows and then I'll leave it with you to go create alright so we need now the Persian band Let's see if I can actually get a decent camera angle one two, three, four. Sorry about that. Just lost track of where I had everything. There you go, there's the bead. And one, two, three, four. So that's for the first side. One, two, See if I can get it to focus. Four. It's really not liking me. I do this with my iPad, so it's um I'm so not technically savvy. One, two, three, four. Alright. So there you have the second lot of the normal loops loaded up. Hook off the first side, put the tension on, and slide on. These Persian bands are just a trifle sticky. Jelly bands are really easy to use doing it this way, but they still work alright. So I thought I'd give them a go. So I do find them just a little bit sticky. Alright, so that's that side. On this first side, I find it easy to come from behind and hook it over that way. And then the second side, looking it off, sliding off the band, the bead, and the band, and then hooking it back on, whichever way is comfortable for you. Like I said, don't be surprised if you lose things. You would have seen on my hidden loophole bracelet, I lost it a couple of times, but it's a very quick fix to get it back on there. So we've got that, and then your next band. I'm not sure that these are the classiest beads to be demonstrating with, but I know that there are those of you out there who are very good with um, finding gorgeous beads to max, match with bands, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do with it. Alrighty. So basically you just continue that until you get it the length that you want it for your wrist and finishing it off is as simple as getting the last two before you put this band on when you're, in, when you're at the end you actually just get the last two bands that are on there and hook them onto your hook and c-clip them Alrighty. so when I get to the end I usually fiddle around if I find that there's some sticking out. I'll just pull the shorter ones and even them out a bit. See if you've got any long loops on there. Strange to be doing this on camera rather than looking at the bands themselves. So I just get them up all and neaten them out. Now having done the quad capped bands, it's actually forming a little bit of a loophole effect on this one because the loophole is really only created by the by the tension on the bands. So this one would actually be kind of cool as a bit of a loophole band. Alrighty, so I hope that's made sense. Um, the taking off is the same as 
I've demonstrated before on the hidden loophole bracelet. Maybe I'll just show it. So assuming that you've got to the end and you've got all the ones that you want on there, it's the right length for your wrist. Then you just have to take off this one and this one and C-clip them. So pop your C-clip through there, oops, through there and on the other end you just separate the bands. If you put one band on it doesn't matter, you just find a space or create a space and just pop your C-clip on the end there and it'll go quite neatly around. Alright, I hope this has been helpful and I'll also be doing one soon on the hidden links bracelet. Um, I'll see you then. Bye guys!